elasticity analysis can give us insight into the impact of forces like cost saving gains, or in other words, the introduction of new equipment or new production practices that decrease the cost of production for suppliers. Cost saving gains cause supply to shift to the right from SO to S1. That is, at any given price, firms will be willing to supply a greater quantity. If demand is inelastic, as in the graph on the left, the result of this cost-saving technological improvement will be substantially lower prices. If demand is elastic, as in the graph on the right, the result of the same cost-saving technological improvement will be only slightly lower prices. Consumers benefit in either case from a greater quantity at a lower price, but the benefit is greater when demand is inelastic, as in the graph on the left. A higher cost, like a higher tax on cigarette companies, for, from the example in the text, lead supply to shift to the left. This shift is identical in both of the graphs shown. However, in the graph on the left, where demand is inelastic, the cost increase can largely be passed along to consumers in the form of higher prices, without much of a decline in equilibrium quantity. In the graph on the right, demand is elastic, so the shift in supply results primarily in a lower equilibrium quantity and a small change in price. Consumers suffer in either case, but in the graph on the left, they suffer from paying a higher price for the same quantity while in the graph on the right, they suffer from buying a lower quantity and presumably needing to shift their consumption elsewhere. Let's take a look at how elasticity determines if certain taxes like an excise tax will generate more or less tax revenues for the government. An excise tax introduces a wedge between the price paid by consumers, PC, and the price received by consumers, PP. When the demand is more elastic, than supply. The tax incidence on consumers, PC minus PE, is lower than the tax incidence on producers, PE minus PP. As we see in the graph on the left, when the supply is more elastic than demand, the tax incidence on consumers, PC minus PE, is larger than the tax incidence on producers, PE minus PP. As seen on the graph on the right, the more elastic the demand and supply curves are, the lower the tax revenue. The next concept looks at the impact of timing on elasticity. In the short run, elasticity tends to be relatively inelastic. And in the long run, it tends to be relatively elastic. This makes sense because information about changes in the market and adjustments to those changes take time. Therefore, in the long run, with more time, more adjustments tend to take place, leading to a more elastic or responsive demand curve. These graphs provide us with a visual example for this. The intersection, EO, between demand curve D and supply curve SO is the same in both graphs. The, the shift of supply to the left from SO to S1 is identical in both graphs. The new equilibrium, E1, has a higher price and a lower quantity than the original equilibrium, EO, in graphs. However, the shape of the demand curve, D, is different in both graphs. In the graph on the left, demand is less elastic, and in the graph on the right, demand is more elastic. As a result, the shift in supply can result either in a new equilibrium with a much higher price and an only slightly smaller quantity, as in the graph on the left, or in a new equilibrium with only a small increase in price and a relatively larger reduction in quantity, as in the graph on the right.